Seeger. And that is how the West was won. The Dodgers, for the third consecutive year, win the National League Western Division title. That is something this franchise has never done before. Over the postseason, three years in a row. It's a beautiful night for baseball. And live from AT&T Park in San Francisco, Sportsnet LA presents the Los Angeles Dodgers and the San Francisco Giants in game three of this four-game series. Hi again, everybody. Charlie Steiner, Oral Hershiser. Of course, the Dodgers won the National League Western Division crown for the third consecutive year last night. So between now and Sunday, what do the Dodgers do with an eye toward a week from tomorrow when they begin the postseason with the Mets? They're actually chasing the Mets right now. The Mets have them in their rearview mirror, but the Dodgers would love to catch the Mets and get that home field advantage. And you think about the three things the Dodgers want to do. They want to win, they want to rest the right players, and they want to keep them in rhythm. And I think that's the key to the next few games. Corey Seager in the lineup again tonight, batting third, playing at third base. With the base hit last night, he has now reached base by hit or by walk in his first 21 starts. It's absolutely amazing, and a child will lead them. And you talk about a guy that you can wait for the glove at times, but the glove has been outstanding at third, at short. But the bat has been the thing that has been the most impressive thing from this youngster. Three home runs, 15 RBIs, hitting over 300 against righties and just a tick under against lefties. So there's nobody you can put him in the lineup against everybody he can hit. So we're getting ready for what is essentially the first of the final five games of the season. Dodgers getting ready. There'll be some alterations in the rotation as well. When we come back, Alana will tell us all about that.
after Clayton Kershaw's Herculean performance last night. The Dodgers now have five games left. That 1.16 career ERA at AT&T Park is the lowest earned run average for any pitcher at any park outside of his own in baseball history. And so last night, boy, did he ever come up big. Kershaw on the night, no runs and a hit, 13 strikeouts and one walk. So now the Dodgers have to clean up some small details between now and Sunday. And in Philadelphia tonight, the Mets and Phillies are tied at five. Carl Crawford's going to lead it off for the Dodgers to be followed by Jimmy Rollins and Corey Seager batting third at third. Ethier, Utley, and Grandall. Austin Barnes catching. Jock Peterson in center. Mike Bolsinger pitching and batting ninth. And the 27-year-old right-hander Mike Leak out of San Diego, Arizona State came over as a trade deadline acquisition. Crawford takes high and away. One ball, no strikes. They're going to see Mike Leak throwing his sinker and cutter predominantly and also has the slider and the curveball. Has really struggled since becoming a giant. Crawford into center field. And that's Angel Pagan. So we're underway. Pagan in center. He's flanked by Mac Williamson in left and Jared Parker in right. Duffy, Crawford, Tomlinson, and Nick Noonan at first base. And Trevor Brown out of UCLA is behind the plate. Jimmy Rollins stepping in. And so the Dodgers at 88 and 69. And Jimmy tonight starting at short. Seeger on deck. Batting third, playing at third base. Looks like we're going to see Seeger pretty much down the stretch. And Rollins getting the start tonight. The switch hitter fouls it off to the left. Jimmy handled yesterday in a very classy manner. And Don Mattingly had to call him in and say that he wasn't going to be starting the possible clincher, that Corey Seeger was going to play shortstop. No balls and two strikes. And as a veteran leader throughout the year, and a guy who's really turned it up a notch, Don Mattingly said it was a tough conversation to have, but uh, Jimmy handled it very well. I'm sure Jimmy's going to get his opportunity still. No balls and two strikes with Seeger on deck. But Rollins knew coming in he was going to be the caretaker this year. He was going to fill in that void until Corey Seeger was ready and Corey Seager is ready. The one-two is inside and low. And without Jimmy hurting the knuckle on his right hand, the opportunity might not have existed for Corey Seager. He would have got called up, but he probably wouldn't have gotten the at-bats and the time. But out of necessity, that happened, and then he just has been shining. Out of play. A lefty-laden lineup for the Dodgers tonight. Why? Mike Leak, in his last four outings, left-handed batters are hitting 415 against him, 17 for 41. As Oral was mentioning, he has not lived up to what the Giants had hoped they were going to get at the trade deadline from Cincinnati. Rollins fouls it off. He's gone one and five with an ERA of 486 in eight outings since coming to San Francisco. Even been on the DL, was running in the outfield and pulled a hamstring, was on the DL for 18 days. That came right after his very first start with the Giants. So an ominous beginning and hasn't been so smooth since. Two balls and two strikes. Well, the electricity in the ballpark tonight is a little bit different than it was last night. It's almost a golf crowd. Yeah. And plenty of good seats still available. Rollins takes up and in. Works the count full. Mets and Phillies in the bottom of the sixth. At Citizens Bank, they're all knotted at five. Dodger fans on this night are rooting for Philadelphia. On three and two. Rollins taking a page out of the Clayton Kershaw hitting book. Oh, they cut away. That at bat last night, 13 pitches. It was the beginning of the end for Madison Bumgarner. 
It was another chapter in his ability to lead this team in all facets of the game. Rollins works out the walk. Here's Corey Seeger. For his light, cold, hard facts are Babe Herman started a Hall of Fame career getting on base with a hit or a walk in his first 37. And Gibby Brack. Gilliam, of course, is next on the pecking order, and Seeger is just three games behind him. Seeger last night, one for five. And he takes under the D's, one ball and no strikes. Congratulations to the Cardinals. They clinched the Central as they split a doubleheader with the Pirates today. And to the Toronto Blue Jays, who clinched the American League East. One ball and no strikes. One and one to Seeger. Question mark for the Blue Jays now is when do they get Troy Tulowitzki back? He says he'll be ready. He's been uh, taking some BP, certainly they call soft swing. But he has vowed that uh, when the division series begins next week, he'll be in the lineup. Two balls and a strike to Seeger. During this streak that Corey has had, his overall statistics, three home runs, 15 RBIs. He's just not only come up here and hit for average, but he's hit for power and production. Eight doubles and a triple. 333 is on base percentage is 423. So he has lived up to advanced billing. Two balls and a strike. Two and two to Seeger. He has batted in every spot in the lineup except leadoff and seventh. Three sixty two against righties and just a shade shy of three hundred against left handed pitching. Two and two. Rollins leading from first. Ground ball right side. Tomlinson. Crawford the throw to first. And a double play. So Seeger bounces into the four six three double play. Nicely turned by Tomlinson and then Crawford fires a seed to Noonan. No runs, no hits. We'll go to the bottom half. Madison Bumgarner took the loss last night, standing next to his skipper, Bruce Bochy's lineup includes Angel Pagan at the top, Kelby Tomlinson, and Matt Duffy. Crawford in the cleanup spot, Jarrett Parker is in right. Mac Williamson, big burly left fielder. Trevor Brown out of New Hall and UCLA is catching Nick Noonan at first base. Mike Leak is pitching and batting ninth, and Mike Bolsinger making his 21st start. And Mike is really kind of pitching to 
get onto the playoff roster. Has not fared very well since being called back up from AAA, and his last three outings has not reached five innings. So probably won't be the third starter in the playoffs, but has a chance to be a long man in the bullpen. So this is a big game for him. In his last start on Friday, gave up seven runs, four earned on seven hits in four innings. That was against the Rockies. The beginning of a lackluster weekend for the Dodgers, which is now in the rearview mirror. Pagan takes a strike. It is nothing in one. Pagan and Tomlinson and Duffy will bat here in the bottom of the first. Pagan had knee issues this year and takes high and away. One ball and one strike. 263 on the season. 239 from the left side. And a 319 hitter when he bats from the right side. The switch hitter on one and one. Takes under the knees. Two balls and one strike. Dodgers getting a break from the Phillies tonight. The Mets are hitting in the top of the seventh. A couple of stories of interest there. Phillies take the lead six to five in the bottom of the six on a wild pitch uncorked by Carlos Torres. Earlier in the game, Orlando Cespedes was uh, hit by a pitch on the hand and had to come out of the game. Not broken, we're told. Cespedes out of the game. They were holding their breath for about an hour awaiting the outcome of the x-ray. Negative, but a contusion he has on his hand. And that's a, depending on how much swelling he has. It takes sometimes two, three days to get out. Well, again, from... Met point of view, the Dodger point of view, everybody's point of view outside of the wild card. Be ready a week from tomorrow. And so one would think Cespedes will have time to recoup. I'm sure a lot of today, Don Mattingly was going from veteran to veteran, starting to ask questions about what kind of playing time they would like, what kind of rhythm they want to the workload for the rest of the season. The 2-2. Two -two. Generally, and curious what uh, what your recollections are when you've got house money like this and you've got five days, you want to keep in rhythm. You don't want to work too hard either. So I think the veterans give me three at bats. Give me out after six innings, three at bats. That's good. And it's basically playing off Broadway. Uh, they they have the, the chance to catch the Mets, and if it goes up on the scoreboard, I think out of one eye, there'll be some scoreboard watching on that game. If they have a chance to actually pass them because the tie, as you've said many a time, is goes in the Mets' favor. In the dirt, strike three. So Pagan went around and Home plate umpire Mike Estabrook immediately pointed at you're out. Defensively tonight for the Dodgers, it'll be Crawford in left and Peterson in center, and Andre Ethier in right. Corey Seager getting the start at third base, and Jimmy Rollins and Chase Utley. They've been together for a time or two. Yasmani Grandal at first base, Austin Barnes behind the plate. And so A.J. Ellis has a night off. Adrian Gonzalez sitting this one out. And this is Kelby Tomlinson. Tomlinson has filled in ably with Joe Panic with the bad back done for the year. You know, we talk about the workload for the veterans and what they want to do. I think it will depend on that Met scoreboard because I think there is some value to getting home field advantage in a five game series. I know Nomar talks about it back in the studio that if you can win that first game on the road if you happen to be the road team now you come home you just have to sweep a two game series and it's over so a championship team should be able to split on the road and a championship team should also be able to win a two game series at home and if you fail in the two game series after splitting on the road you still have a, a last game where you go back to New York game five where you get another shot the Dodgers are a much better team at home than they are on the road. The Mets, 48 and 30 at City Field, 41 and 38 on the road. So both teams are better at home. 
The Dodgers are considerably better at home. Two balls and two strikes to Kelby Tomlinson. This does have the feel of an exhibition game. A little bit. And you're talking about when the Dodgers are, are better. They're exceptionally better two nights ago in the ninth inning. From then on, there's been an awful lot of energy, an awful lot of focus to their game since the ninth inning when they came back. And even though they lost the extra innings, each one of them has taken that as a landmark to say, this is the team we want to be. Bolsinger loses Tomlinson a one-out walk in the bottom of the first. We saw flawless defense from them. We saw Justin Turner get a butt down, get runners over. Carl Crawford got a stolen base. Corey Seager drove in a run, scored a run. It was just a very crisply played game, and it was something they really needed to turn the page on the Colorado series. Kike Hernandez, big comeback the last couple of games. A long distance home run last night. Van Slyke has the night off as well. And in the case of Kike Hernandez, who's just two games back from the disabled list, was 26 games with the hamstring. And they want to be careful with him. Matt Duffy, one ball and no strikes. Into left field. Back goes Crawford, and it's gone. A home run. Matt Duffy hits it out. His 12th home run. And the Giants take an early 2-0 lead. And it's a fastball. He's trying to go low and away, and just leaks right on the inner half and up right into almost any right hand hitter swing. And Matt Duffy makes Mike Bolsinger pay for his mistake hitting it over the Toyota sign there in the left field wall. So Bolsinger who has struggled in each of his last four starts off to a slow start tonight. Brandon Crawford stepping in and he takes a strike nothing in one. Crawford leads the Giants with 20 home runs. Buster Posey next with 19. Now if Crawford ends the season leading the Giants in home runs, he'd be the first Giant shortstop. In more than 100 years to lead the team in home runs. A fellow named Bill Dolan back in 1905. Led the Giants with seven. That's why they called it the dead ball era. So the Giants with an early 2-0 lead. When Crawford first came up, we were talking to Bruce Bochy and he said, if this kid can hit just 240, he can play with us for 15 years. Well, Crawford's having an outstanding season. 257, 20 home runs, 81 runs batted in. And he's a tough out in the clutch. Three and two. Grew up here in Northern California, went to school at UCLA. Mets failed to score in the top half of the seventh. They've gone to the bottom of the seventh. In Philadelphia, Philly six to five. And Bolsinger's having all sorts of problems here in the first. His body language looks like there is something bothering him. And I I think it's more than mentally. It looks more physical to me. The last five, seven pitches. Looks like he almost glances into the dugout every time he throws the ball. Failed to get even into the fifth inning in each of the last three starts. Hasn't gone past the fifth in his last five. So Bolsinger is really struggling. 
One ball, no strikes now to Jarrett Parker. The home run given up by Bolsinger here in the first was the 11th and 106 innings. One ball, one strike to Jarrett Parker. Last Saturday, Parker became the first giant rookie in history to hit three home runs in a game. That's including Mel Lott, Willie Mays, Willie McCovey, Orlando Cepeda. That is a foul ball. Parker was called up on September 11th. He's got six home runs and 12 runs batted in in 13 games. Hit 23 in the PCL this year. With 74 runs batted in. So meanwhile, Bolsinger's looking to right his ship. Mac Williamson is on deck. Two run home run for Matt Duffy here in the first and the Giants with the early lead. Crawford has five stolen bases in nine tries. In the bottom of the ninth the Athletics lead the Angels eight to six. Rangers have a 6 to 2 lead in the seventh inning at home against the Tigers. Twins have beaten the Indians 7 to 1. And 2 and 2 to Parker. There goes Crawford. Swung on a miss by 3. The throw is on. So Crawford with a stolen base is sixth of the year. And that would be the second out of the first. Caught a break on the pitch. It's a a definite ball, but a high cutter. Austin Barnes does the best he can, but there was a good jump at first base, and Austin really doesn't have that much of a shot. He'd had to make a perfect throw. Barnes, like Kike Hernandez, Chris Hatcher, came over from the Marlins and the D. Gordon deal. Dan Heron and Miguel Rojas. Two out, two in. And Mac Williamson, two balls and no strikes. Big fella, he pitched at uh, Wake Forest. He's 24, 6 4, and 240. The Red Sox drafted him in 2011. He said thanks, but no thanks. Went back to Wake Forest. And it paid off for him. He was drafted in the third round by the Giants in 2012. Two and two. And Wake Forest has become quite a college baseball hotbed. Mike Bolsinger needs to get out of this inning. 31 pitches already. And you see the ratio. It's almost 50%. Really has not had a lot of conviction to his pitches throughout the whole inning. Well, he gets out of the inning. He strikes out the side, but it was an expensive inning for him. 32 pitches. Two runs. The two run home run by Duffy will go to the second.
in the third consecutive season. Mattingly talking with uh, Rick Honeycutt. Stan Conti is involved in the conversation. I wonder if there may be some issue regarding Bolsinger. And Mike Bolsinger went in the other end of the dugout, went up the tunnel. Stan Conti followed him, and now Conti coming back with the message. And we will see if we see anybody kind of trot down to the bullpen. Bolsinger's the sixth hitter of the inning. Eighth year leading it off. First pitch. Fly ball left field. Williamson is back. First down to the second. The very crowded Dodger dugout. There are 37 players in uniform, including the bullpen. There are no bullpen seats, so everybody shares the cozy confines of the dugouts here at AT&T Park, built in 2000. Almost as if the bullpen was an afterthought. Chase Utley stepping in. There's a strike, nothing in one. So nothing doing to the bullpen. So apparently at this point, Bolsinger is okay. He did throw 32 pitches in the first inning. Dodgers are down two nothing. As Utley falls behind, nothing in two. Yeah, with the 32 pitches, he's not longed for it go deep in this game anyway. Maybe they'll try and get two three innings out of him. Let's see where they go, but he's going to have to get the pitch count down in a hurry. Utley in Philadelphia hit 215 and since coming to the Dodgers in 30 games, hitting 211. 0 oh and 2. Outside one ball and two strikes. Astros and Mariners are scoreless in the second in Seattle. And Utley. Pops to the pitcher. Mike Leak is a terrific all-around athlete and a very good hitter to boot. He was the closest one to it. It's interesting with all the shifts that are going on now in Major League Baseball, the pitcher does have to become a fielder on the pop-ups. Your third baseman swings around and is playing the shortstop position. There's somebody who's got to have to cover the foul territory on the third base side. They've gone to the top of the eighth in Philadelphia. Phillies 6 5 over the Mets. And another pop up in the infield. Randall pops to Duffy, and that does it. Dodgers go quietly. We'll go to the bottom of the second. Giants 2 0.
by Matt Duffy in the first would strike out the side walk two, and when all is said and done by the end of the first he had thrown 32 pitches as we begin the bottom half of the second Trevor Brown Nick Noonan and Mike Leak will bat. Don Magley taking a look at his lineup card, and I'm sure he's thinking about, you know, how long is Mike Bolsinger long for this game? Who will we go to? Do we want to make a double switch, or we let the reliever even? First pitch of the second inning. Utley behind the bag. Throws out Trevor Brown. One pitch, one out in the second. These two teams are playing like it's getaway day. <laughs> First pitch swinging is allowed. This game means nothing to the Giants, means a little something to the Dodgers, as the Mets fail to score in the top of the eighth in Philadelphia, and the Phillies maintain a six to five lead. The Angels are trying to fight back on Oakland. They're down eight to seven. Two outs, but they have first and third. Nick Noonan is the hitter. Noonan one for 13 this year since his call up. Two balls and a strike. Came up on September the 2nd. Had been in the Yankee organization first part of the year. He was released. The Giants signed him to a minor league deal at the beginning of August, came up in the beginning of September. Two and two with one out in the second. And Bolsinger with his fourth strikeout. That's the second out of the inning. He's not getting real excited after he strikes somebody out. He still looks like he's dealing with something, but I'm sure the message has been. It hurts, but I'm fine, and it's nothing that's career threatening, but he is definitely not himself. You just see the body language on the he keeps grabbing at his back and kind of shaking his arm out sometimes, but I don't think it's anything to do with his arm. There's something that's not right. Mike Leak, a very good hitting pitcher. No balls and a strike. Giants were hoping they found some gold in picking up Leak from Cincinnati. Outstanding athlete out of San Diego, went to Arizona State. But it's been a tough go since coming to San Francisco. He was 9 and 6 in 22 starts in Cincinnati, but 1 and 5 with the Giants. One ball and two strikes. Four eighty six ERA for a leak since coming to San Francisco and the one two is high two balls and two strikes. This is Bolsinger's twenty first start with the Dodgers. And he strikes out leak. He's got five strikeouts in the first two head to the third. Barnes, Peterson, and Bolsinger are due to hit. Giants 2 0.
and potentially Mike Bolsinger, depending upon whether or not Don Mattingly runs him back out there. You guys were talking about home field advantage earlier in the broadcast. We also talked about it a lot on the pregame show today. And, of course, in 2014, the Dodgers were 49-32. and 32. They had the best road record in all of Major League Baseball. The same cannot be said in 2015. Seven games below 500. Davey Loeb said... It doesn't matter at all. Zero impact as far as home field is concerned, in his opinion. Donning said he wants the final game at home. John Valentin said much better at home this year. We'll take the home field. Austin Barnes leading it off in the third inning. And he takes a strike. Nothing in one. Barnes, another former Marlin. At the end of the day, the team that wins the last game of the year is the champion. So the importance of where that last game could be in this first round, and I think that's what pretty much Don Mattingly is talking about, that it might not matter where we start the series or how the series goes until and if you get to the final game. Mets failed to score in the eighth. They're in the bottom of the eighth, and the Phillies have a 6-5 to five lead. They're playing in Philadelphia. Mets are 89 and 68. The Dodgers are 88 and 69. So there's a game, but it's really two games. The Dodgers have to finish the season a game better than the Mets because if they finish in a tie, the home field advantage will go to New York because they beat the Dodgers four out of seven this year. First out of the third inning. In the first year of this three-year streak, the Dodgers didn't have home field advantage, but they beat the Braves in four games. Kershaw pitched the fourth game at Dodger Stadium. It knocked them out. So Bolsinger is good to go. Peterson steps in. Peterson with a fly ball to right. And in the corner and hooking foul and out of play as Jared Parker runs into the wall. Mets play the Phillies tomorrow. And then the Washington Nationals will be in to New York for the final three. Syndergaard, Harvey, and DeGrom to pitch for New York. You think the tabloids are going to have fun with the Nationals in New York? Come on in, set a spell. Oh, and one to Peterson. Jock down to 211. Two balls and a strike to Peterson. And there are parts of this game and parts of this lineup that people are just getting their work in and the Dodgers want to win. And there's also parts of this lineup that people are really still trying to make an impression. And Jock Peterson is definitely one of them. Especially when the comeback of Kike Hernandez. Remember when Kike pulled the hamstring, he had essentially taken over the starting job in center field. That's Ian Thomas with the beard. And the Libertor next to Kike. Three and two now with one out in the third. Matt Duffy two run home run in the first. The difference in the game. Peterson. And that is Crawford on the first base side of second. There's two gone. And Bolsinger coming up. Whatever Mike is dealing with, he's convinced everybody he's fine to pitch, but he's definitely been showing that he's not right with his body language. He's got one hit this year in 37 at bats. That translates into 0 27. One hit is a double. 
2-0 to Bolzinger. It's gone final in Anaheim, by the way. Athletics hang on and beat the Angels. Bolsinger is done. So are the Dodgers. They go in order in the third. In the bottom of the third, it'll be the top of the order for the Giants. Pagan, Tomlinson, and Duffy coming up. Excitement, limited tickets to the Dodgers home games for the National League Division Series and the National League Championship Series are on sale now. Visit Dodgers.com slash postseason to order yours today. Alec Asher started for the Phillies tonight, got knocked out in the first inning. Mets tattooed him for five runs and three base hits. The Philly bullpen since then has given up a grand total of three base hits. So from a five to nothing deficit, Philadelphia with a run in the bottom of the eighth now lead the Mets seven to five. So the Dodgers with a chance to pick up a game on New York in this final week of the year. 0 oh and 2 to Pagan who struck out swinging in his first at bat. With the Angel loss and the Twins loss, the Yankees are tied in the 11th. They'll secure a uh, playoff spot if they would win. Of course, you got the Astros. They still have a a heartbeat, but the Mariners are leading them two to nothing after two and a half up in Seattle. And the Dodgers certainly can play relaxed. Forty-eight hours ago, it wasn't that way. Oh, it wasn't, but it's amazing once you get across the finish line how good it feels and it just changes everything. In the rear view mirror, objects are closer than they may appear. <laughs> and the Dodgers for the third consecutive season win the West. The Giants, the defending champions. Begin the plan for next year. Pagan steps out of the box. Bolsinger's 49th pitch. Three and two. Kelby Tomlinson on deck and then Matt Duffy. To the right side. Oh, look at the play by Utley, but there's nobody there. Grandall, not normally a first baseman. Bolsinger late to the dance. 
Utley did all he could, but there was nobody home. Part of the body language that I've been reading with Mike Bolsinger up here are there been some other foul balls down the right field line that he hasn't broken on. And this one again, you see he's not even out of the dirt on a ball over there. And when you have a guy who doesn't play first base every day, you've got to break on every ball because you never know when he's going to wander away on one that you routinely think that angle is, okay, the first baseman and the second baseman have me covered. Kelby Tomlinson with the runner going. And the stolen base for Pagan. For Angel Pagan, his 12th stolen base of the year. Austin Barnes just couldn't glove it right there, but Pagan went on first movement, and there was no way he had a chance to throw him out, even if he catches it cleanly. Chase Utley is talking with second baseman Paul Nart about what precisely don't know. Where he wants him positioned, I think, to be able to see home plate. Tomlinson walked in his first at bat and takes inside. Two balls and no strikes. Two runs and two hits for San Francisco. Pagan is running. Tomlinson is hitting. Pagan will score. And Tomlinson will arrive at second base to give the Giants a three to nothing lead. Now the Dodgers start some bullpen action. Looks like it's going to be Carlos Frias down there. Pagan was running. He was looked like he was going to have third base stolen, but was able to just stand up over there, pick up the ball a little late, but it was so far down there in the corner. It was an easy way to score. So Frias is going to work. And now as we watch Bolsinger, and now Barnes going to go out and try to buy some time for Frias. Is working in a hurry. He just looks stiff. Just doesn't look right. Rick Cunningham coming out to the mound now to give Frias some more time and to check on Bolsinger. But this is completely a delay. Rick knows everything about what's going on with Mike because he's been in the dugout a few times since warming up in the bullpen and throwing a few innings. So this is just really to stand out there and give him some time. Hey, if you're going to be out here, you might as well give your best effort. I know you're dealing with a few things. Let's go ahead and get this done. If you are what your record says you are, Rick Honeycutt, who's leaving the mound now, since 2006 taking over the Dodger pitching staff, in the major leagues, the Dodgers have the lowest ERA, 365. Opponents are hitting just 247 against his staffs, and they have recorded the most strikeouts. In the last 10 years for Cunnicutt as the pitching coach of the Dodgers. Matt Duffy takes a strike and it's nothing in one. Duffy the two run home run in the first inning. His 12th of the year. Outside. Duffy in the first. Got it all. His 12th. Gave San Francisco the 2 0 lead. They tack on another run here in the bottom of the third. And Duffy with a runner in scoring position. And it's now 1 and 2. So Duffy takes over as a giant third baseman after Pablo Sandoval goes to Boston. Sandoval has a pedestrian year. Duffy has a breakout year. Potential rookie of the year. Side. See Boston send Hanley Ramirez home. Go home. Begin your rehab process in your own time, in your own place, in your own space. On two and two. Grounded to short. Rollins throws to third and out at third base. Kelby Tomlinson. That was just not a good base running decision. 
It was a nice play by Jimmy Rollins and an even nicer play by Corey Seager staying at home. Somebody's just learning how to play third base. This ball comes off the bat. Corey could have wandered off a little bit, but knows where Jimmy is. Makes a good solid tag. Jimmy with a nice snap throw right there. Doesn't use the full arm swing. And Corey's at home and puts the tag down. One of the many attributes that Seager has shown off in his first big league month. His baseball awareness. He, he just has a huge baseball IQ. Brandon Crawford takes inside and low one ball, no strikes. I think that's one of the things that has not surprised, but pleasantly surprised the Dodger coaching staff watching him play every day. Seager. Sometimes, How smart he is out there. Sometimes you can have that IQ, but it doesn't show up for a month to a year because of nerves and being in awe of what you're the situation you're in and, but he came right up here and from the very first day was calm was poised and was able to show all of his abilities shortstop third base doesn't matter one iota just his sixth game at third base Two balls and no strikes to Crawford, who walked in his first at bat. Carlos Frias continues to warm in the Dodger pen. Bolsinger continues to struggle. He's already at 60 pitches with one out in the third. Drilled into the glove of Utley and a double play. A backhanded flip. Duffy is caught at first. Crawford hits it right on the screws and has nothing to show for it. One run, two hits, and... Brought to you by the 2015 Jeep Cherokee with an EPA estimated 31 highway MPG. It's the perfect choice. Visit Jeep.com today. Top of the order for the Dodgers in the top half of the fourth down three to nothing. Crawford fly to center in his first at bat and takes a strike. It's nothing in one. So the Mets tonight scored five in the first in Philadelphia. And that was all they would score. Phillies come back and beat them seven to five. So the Mets with the loss now have 69 losses, as many as the Dodgers. So if the Dodgers were to win tonight, they can pull all even with New York. And after tonight, four games to go. Rollins on deck, Seeger to follow, and a ground ball to second base where Tomlinson picks it up. And throws out Crawford. First out of the fourth. Nine, 
Jimmy Rollins walked on an 11 pitch at bat in his first plate appearance tonight. The only Dodger to reach base, but Mike Leake has still faced the minimum. Rollins on the front end of a double play in his first plate appearance. And he singles into center field for the Dodgers. That's their first hit of the night. Seeger, who's coming up, bounced into that inning ending 4 6 3 double play back in the first. Making his sixth start at third base this year, Corey Seeger. At 327. And a balk. It looked like he tried to step off and kind of stumbled. Yeah, he didn't even try to step off. He just flinched. Flexed both of his knees as he was coming set. Starting your delivery. And Hickox, the first base umpire, Mike Estabrook. The home plate umpire both pointed. And so Seeger, who has been on base with a hit or a walk in his first 21 big league starts. Base hit here. He can knock in a run. Nothing in two. Corey three home runs 15 runs batted in. Heath year is on deck. And the 0 2. Ball two strikes. For his older brother, Kyle Seeger, and the Mariners have a two to nothing lead on the Astros. Houston hitting in the top of the fourth at Safeco Field. Angels lost him. Now the one two. Roller up the first base line. Leak, the good athlete, takes it himself. Seeger tagged out. Rollins goes to third. And tomorrow on an all new backstage Dodgers. Rookies Jock Peterson and Scott Shevler help Tommy Lasorda celebrate his birthday. Plus, Vin Scully breaks a Guinness World Record. Don't miss Backstage Dodgers tomorrow night at 7 o'clock right here on Sportsnet LA. About the time the Dodger Charter will be landing. The last game of the last road trip tomorrow. First pitch at a quarter to one. Brett Anderson and Tim Hudson. I think that's going to be Hudson's final start. I think it will be. What a wonderful career he had. Yes. Hudson, Mulder, and Zito. Here's the 1 0. Heath here takes inside. Two balls and no strikes. The Giants are looking ahead toward next year, and the Dodgers are looking ahead toward next week. But the Giants, of course, world champions in three of the last five years. What a remarkable run they've had, and considering all the injuries they've had to deal with this year, stay in the race as late as they did. Three and one. They are king of the even years. And the Dodgers are the kings of one every 27. Ethier takes a walk. Boy, would the Dodgers like to put an end to that. 
It's been too long. Chase Utley coming up. Fouled out in his first at bat. Giants three runs and three hits. Dodgers no runs and one. Utley is the tying run at the plate with two out of the top of the fourth. Up and in. Guess Bonnie Grandal is on deck. Giants have beaten the Dodgers this year seven. Correction, 10 out of 17. And a one hopper to second base. Tomlinson will throw it up, Lee, and that'll end the inning. No runs, one hit, two left after three and a half. Giants, three nothing. likely be packing in the awards at the end of this season. He was also named to the Roy Campanella Award. It was the 10th annual of the award. The right-hander was voted most inspirational Dodger by his teammates and coaches. It's given to the Los Angeles Dodger that exemplifies the spirit and leadership of the late Hall of Fame catcher. You can see the former winners the last four seasons, Clayton Kershaw on there twice, his battery mate, A.J. Ellis, and Matt Kemp, guys. Well, the very first can't be award winner was Raphael for call back in 2006 and what a year Granky has turned in. He and Jake Arietta are the one two you would think for the Cy Young but after Kershaw's performance last night can't overlook Clayton either. I think you got the top three there for sure. We just don't know what order they're going to be in. You almost get the sense, just in talking to baseball people, not necessarily writers, that in the last maybe week to ten days, Arietta is now around the turn, heading for home. Maybe the man. It's going to be close. Frankie, of course, pitched night before last and was more than solid. Two runs and four hits in seven innings. Parker will be thrown out. That's the sixth strikeout of the game for Bolsinger in the first out of the fourth. It really did seem like Zach was head and shoulders above the other two competitors, his teammate Clayton Kershaw and Jake Arrieta. But in the last two, three starts, and Jake started all of them, or Zach had to miss one with the calf in injury 
And it just seemed like that's when a little bit of that momentum and the people that we run into around ballparks and around the nation as we talk to them. That all of a sudden, Arietta is up there right even with him or maybe even slightly ahead. Now that's the one two punch the Dodgers are going to have to rely on. Beginning next Friday, either in New York or Los Angeles. There's no better one two punch in baseball. Those guys pitch up to their potential. There's a real good chance the Dodgers to go deep into October. Williamson. Foul. And it's one ball and two strikes. So Granky leads the league with a 168 ERA. Arietta's 182 and Kershaw's at 216. Arietta leads the league with 21 wins. Granky has 18, Kershaw has 60. Arietta has four complete games. Harriet is fourth in the league in strikeouts. Right three, and Austin Barnes can't find it. It goes into the book as a seventh strikeout for Bolsinger. It gets so far away, even if he knew where it was going. You're going to reach base on that. Strikeout wild pitch. If it's within three, four feet, you throw people out. When it goes that far, it's a good 35, 40 feet away from him. Arietta and uh, Granky, opponent's batting average. Arietta 187. Granky 188. So they've got quite a horse race. Kershaw, opponents are hitting 195 against him. I remember Zach was stuck on what about win number five or six it was and he had to go almost ten starts because he wouldn't get much run support. His ERA was still down under two. If it comes down to wins and losses as far as the voters, that, that's the one place that would stick in my craw that he had no control during that stretch of, of winning a game. He did everything he could. Just end up with a no decision. And of course, you've got the asterisks on a season. That Granky with the consecutive shutout streak. Arietta with the no hitter. There's the 1 1. Runner goes. A perfectly executed hit and run. Williamson will go to third. So Trevor Brown with the single to right. You could have a pretty spirited debate, Cubs and Dodger fans, about who the Cy Young Award winner is, and you could make a pretty compelling case for both. That base hit and hit and run right there is going to probably be the last we see of Mike Bolsinger. Mattingly is going to come and get him, and Jim Johnson is on his way in. Giants are threatening first and third. One out, fourth inning. And they lead the Dodgers 3 0.
going to be food, music, autographs, on stage interviews, games, and fun for the entire family. All beginning at 2 o'clock in the afternoon and brought to you by Coca-Cola, Time Warner Cable, and State Farm. For tickets, go to Dodgers.com slash Viva. So Jim Johnson on in relief of Bolsinger, who went three and a third, and Jim Johnson making his 72nd appearance. And with the Dodgers, this is his 23rd. First and third, one out. And a ground ball slowly hit to short. Rollins steps on the bag, fires to first, and with one pitch, Johnson gets two outs. As we head to the fifth, the Giants lead 3 0. Hit for the Dodgers at Jimmy Rollins, one out single in the fourth. As we head to the top half of the fifth, it'll be Grandall, Barnes, and Peterson. As Monty Grandall continues to struggle, he popped a third in his first at bat. Grandall sat it out last night. First pitch of the fifth. The shift is on for Grandall on the right side of the infield. Outfield is straight away. Slow roller to second base. Grandall's hitting problems continue. That's the first out of the fifth inning. It's so important to the Dodgers in the first half. All star continued that after, but this shoulder issue. That creeped up on him has really hampered his swing. Tried to play through it, then took some time off, came back, still hasn't found it. Fortunately for the Dodgers, A.J. Ellis has hit the ball very well. As Grandall has been struggling, Ellis has the night off, and so Austin Barnes is catching and takes a strike. It's nothing in two. You have two all stars that have really kind of flipped. You know, Jock Peterson maybe losing his job to Kiki Hernandez and maybe Osmani Grandal will not be the number one catcher going forward. Maybe it'll be AJ Ellis. Well, once the postseason arrives, all the slates are clean. Here's a one two. They go around. Standard answer in Don Manningly's media scrum before games is we feel that so and so gives us the best chance to win today. And so it's a day by day decision on who's in the lineup, where they bat. 
It's not a set, oh, this, these are the starters and these are the utility guys or the bench role players. It is a day-to-day -day decision on who has the job. Jimmy Williams, back when he was manager, he would simply say, manager's decision. Period. No explanation. Manager's decision. Here's a 3-2. Ooh. Well, Don has been very consistent with that phrase, too. Yeah. You know, it's, we feel like this gives us the best chance to win today. That was a, uh, that, that came from Tory. That was a Tory yeah. line. And he really never addresses who the starters are or who has the job or not. It's just, it's about the daily lineup. It's a nice way of saying, this is what I feel like. <laughs> Barnes takes a walk, and we were mentioning uh, Grandal's had some issues. Alana, what more? Well, I can tell you that Yasmani Grandal, obviously, with the offensive slump right now, Don Mattingly said that he feels that he's comfortable enough at first base defensively to put him in there, and he didn't think that rest was going to help the offensive slump. He wanted to run him back out there to continue to have him work on his swing. As far as Austin Barnes is concerned, he wanted him behind the play today because he had worked so much with Mike Bolsinger in the minor leagues and the comfort level there, and Don Mattingly is saying that with Bolsinger struggling, that he thought that that battery mate would help him, guys. And again, when you got 37 players, you got to... A lot more ingredients to work with. Jock Peterson is the batter. And it's... How about that ping pong play? Off Crawford's glove into Tomlinson's. Throws to Noonan. Peterson is retired and thinks, what do I have to do? This is one way for the shift to help you, that if the ball bounce off of you, and you're going to make an error, you got another player right there with you. You're not only two guys on one side of the field. There's three. Usually it's a 6-4-3 double play. Yeah. Tomlinson last night booted a ball early that helped the Dodgers out to get a run, but here today, Crawford boots it, and Tomlinson's there to rescue him. And Adrian Gonzalez is going to pinch hit for Jim Johnson. Gonzalez stepping in. He's got essentially the night off. We were talking earlier. When you got a veteran like Gonzalez or Carl Crawford or whatever, as they get ready for the postseason, they can almost dictate to the manager how many at bats I want or need. And on this night, Gonzalez, it's basically a busman's holiday. One ball, one strike. I think Adrian played out the string last year, but I think it was all about getting three at bats. And he wasn't dealing with a cranky back like he is this year. So it'll be interesting to watch his workload as we go forward. But I would think he wants to play every day, keep his rhythm. How much every day is is the question. In the dirt and going to third base is Austin Barnes. Kicks past Trevor Brown. Wide left. Down and in breaking ball. Almost hits Adrian on the toes. Two and one to Gonzalez. With Carl Crawford on deck. Adrian takes inside. It's now three balls and a strike. Astros and Mariners are tied at two. Houston hitting at the top of the fifth in Seattle. Here's a 3 1. Gonzalez fouls it off. Seattle will be under new management. Jerry DePoto, the fallen angel, resurfaces in Seattle. On three and two with two out. And Barnes leading off third. About it. A couple individual numbers that players might start to look at. Adrian with 28 home runs, got a chance for 30. Andre Ethier's got a chance to hit 300. Right up there around 298. Came into the game at 299. Clayton Kershaw's got a chance for 300 strikeouts. Six more. Gonzalez down on strikes, and that will end the inning. First strikeout for Lee.
No runs, a walk, and a man left. We'll go to the bottom half of the fifth, and we'll be seeing Carlos Frias next. Toyota dealers. The time is short, but the savings are big at Toyota's Clearance Countdown. Going on now. So here's Carlos Frias, the third Dodger pitcher of the night. Bolsinger, three and a third, three runs and four hits, 73 pitches. Jim Johnson faced one batter, one pitch, and got two outs. Can't be more efficient than that. And Frias making his 17th. Appearance of the year. For Frias, this is his fourth appearance out of the bullpen. Mike Leak, over the course of his career, has been a very good hitting pitcher. Career 234. Takes a strike, and it's nothing in one. Has five career home runs. All right. Bumgarner has five home runs this year. Madison Bumgarner could be an everyday player, be a first baseman if he wasn't a pitcher. He doesn't have the wheels that somebody play the outfield. I don't think he can play left field. He could definitely play first base. But Free is not the least bit intimidated by Leak. Strikes him out. First down to the fifth. Rick and Keel move from the mound to center field and right field. Was it about 15 years ago or so, when Hank Keel came undone in the playoffs. Yes. Against the Mets. Remember doing those games. Balls directly to the backstop. It was really painful to watch. Mm -hmm. So to see somebody come. Hard enough to watch somebody come undone to begin with. But to come undone on such a big national stage, it was something from which he could not recover. He never lost his arm strength. We saw some of the best throws from the outfield ever from him once he transferred out there. But he had enough athletic skill to kind of recraft his career. Pagan. That's a base hit and two at bats and a run scored. The Giants three runs and four hits. The Dodgers no runs and one. One out in the bottom of the fifth. 
Brett Anderson and Tim Hudson tomorrow. It's a matinee first pitch at a quarter to one. Kelby Tomlinson is on deck. Congratulations to the Blue Jays who win the American League East and to the Cardinals who win the National League Central today. Cardinals have won the Central Division each of the last three years. As the Dodgers have done in the National League West. Let's have the results after that change. Three and two to Pagan with one out. And takes a walk. So the Mets lost today or tonight seven to five in Philadelphia a couple of things happened one they now have as many losses as the Dodgers do and after tonight four games remain and even more importantly to the Mets Joanna Cespedes was hit by a pitch tonight left hand and for about a half hour or an hour they were just holding their breath it's not broken as they say euphemistically a contusion which means it's a deep nasty bruise after the game tonight Terry Collins said Cespedes is not going to play tomorrow but breathing a sigh of relief fearing it could have been a whole lot worse Tomlinson has walked doubled scored a run and driven in one tonight Pagan with a stolen base tonight has 12 in 16 tries. Matt Duffy, a two run home run in the first. He's on deck and a ground ball to third. Seeger's got it. There's one, and that's the only one they're going to get. So Tomlinson will take the place of Pagan at first, two out. Youthful reactions down there from Corey Seeger and a newfound. I guess you call it a vacation home down there at third. His home is shortstop, but this Morongo slow mo cam replay gets a good look at him lunging to his left, making a snap throw there to Chase Utley, and Chase deciding with the wheels of Tomlinson to just hang on to the ball. All smiles from the young man. Ball coming at 100 miles an hour, and he's smiling. Matt Duffy. Big tie away, one ball, no strikes. Duffy a home run in the first. His 12th of the year. Takes outside. Several candidates for Rookie of the Year in the National League this year. Stephen Piscotti, who thankfully is okay after that horrific collision, leads all rookies with a 310 average. Duffy's at 297. Gonna have a tough time Chris knocking Chris Bryan out. He's got 26 home runs and 99 runs batted in. Cubs are trying to sweep some awards. Got, they've got some kids. There's Arietta and Bryant. Bryant has scored 86 runs. Duffy has scored 75. Bryant's on base percentage 371. Strikes out a lot, walks a lot. And hits a lot of home runs and one goes further than the next. But Duffy's in the conversation.
Duffy leads all National League rookies with 164 hits, 11 more than Bryant. Here goes the runner, the pitch is outside, the throw. Not quite in time. Slap tag by Utley trying to get the foot of Tomlinson a little late. Chase seems like he feels like he tagged him, but there's no way Chase will know where his hand is in relationship ship to the bag because he's in front tagging the backside and it might be out. If he gets him. Ooh, that's going to be close. Hard to tell from that angle. This is probably a better one. It looks like he got in. We'll take a look. Don Mattingly asking for it. And so he'll get it. So we'll get a replay here. And so the home plate umpire, or actually Dana DeMuth, the crew chief, and Paul Narrett, the second base umpire, will get the headsets and listen to the folks in New York and get their interpretation. DeMuth is putting on the headsets first. The other day, three days ago, Umpired his 4,000th big league game. Where did he get him? There? Ooh, he looks out. If he touches him, he's out. Because when the glove goes by the leg, the hand is not on the bag. Just wonder if they can prove in New York that Chase actually touched him. Well, the other issue is the dirt kicking up. Yeah. Kind of. Hard to tell where and when the hand arrived in relation to the tag on the foot. So congratulations to Dana DeMuth in his 31st big league season. He's umpired 29 World Series games. He is still feverishly chewing his gum. Let's see if this clarifies it any. There's really not a clear definitive look from what we see. But definitive enough in New York to call Tomlinson out on the throw by Austin Barnes. Tomlinson's out there saying, what do I have to do? No runs. No hits, no errors, nobody left. We'll go to the sixth, three nothing, San Francisco. So get your tickets for baseball and some fantastic prizes like a one year lease on a Mercedes Benz C-Class 
An LG 49 inch smart LED TV, a personal lawn care visit by Dodger Stadium groundskeepers. Season tickets for 2016 and much more. For all the details on what's being given away on Sunday, visit Dodgers.com slash fan appreciation. In center field, Pagan tracks it down off the bat of Crawford. One pitch, one out in the sixth. May hear off in the distance, press box PA with the announcement of another sold out house. 404th consecutive sellout for the Giants, 41,112. There's a strike, and it's nothing in one. Dodgers and Giants wrap it up tomorrow afternoon. First pitch, a quarter to one. Line drive up the middle and perfectly positioned is Brandon Crawford. So Rollins is retired, two out. Now Corey Seeger stepping in. 0 for 2 tonight. So Mike Leak coming into the game had really struggled. Since coming to the Giants and tonight, he's got the Dodgers off balance. Seeger on the first pitch bounces to second. A quick, efficient sixth inning for Mike Leak after five and a half. Giants three nothing. By DraftKings. Play daily fantasy baseball for free on DraftKings.com. Use promo code Blue Crew for free entry. We're in the bottom half of the sixth inning at AT&T Park, and the Giants with a three to nothing lead in the bottom half of the fifth inning up in Seattle. The Mariners are leading the Astros five to three. A's beat the Angels tonight. Leading it off for San Francisco in the bottom of the sixth, Matt Duffy. Two run home run in the first, and he's bounced out. Cardinals win the National League Central. The Blue Jays won the American League East. And Duffy fouls it off to the right, and it's nothing in two. Twins beat the Indians seven to one. So the last four days, the American League wild card race is very interesting.
Diving stop by Seeger gets up and throws it wide. A base hit for Duffy. Boyer Seeger showing a lot of range. Three steps and a dive gets up and really understands that he's going to throw the ball aggressively through it into the ground on purpose so that Yasmani would have a chance to get it if it's not online and that's exactly what happened. If it was online, you still got a chance. So a leadoff single for Duffy who's two for three and Brandon Crawford is stepping in. That's another real savvy play from that young man at third base. Learning a new position and understanding what to do in that quick amount of time just to react to know that's the type of throw Davey Concepcion actually invented that throw in Cincinnati from shortstop to bounce it over there when he would go in the hole and throw it across the diamond and bounce it off the AstroTurf that made it obviously a far more easy hop to receive and here's Utley and Rollins they've done that a couple of times haven't they two out nobody on when you're spinning and you don't know where you're exactly throwing, the players learn approximately where they are on the field as they take ground balls and practice throughout their life. But you don't know specifically where you're throwing it on that play. And when you throw it into the ground, it straightens the throw out, and it also gives the first baseman a better chance to get to it online or offline. Corey's older brother, Kyle Seeger, a three-run home run tonight is 26 for the Mariners. Seattle leading the Astros six to three. Seager boys doing pretty well, aren't they? That's quite a family. Jared Parker, 0 for 2, has been struck out twice tonight. I think they got one more brother coming mm -hmm. too. It's like Justin. the Molinas. Justin, I believe he's in the Mariner organization as well. Made his mom and dad when he made his big league debut in San Diego. Aaron Boone is in the house with yeah. ESPN here tonight. It's a baseball family. He and Brett, and dad Bob. And yeah, granddad Ray. Mm -hmm. Two balls and a strike. Aaron Boone, of course, is one of the most famous postseason home runs of the last half century or more. Off Tim Wakefield. There he is. Aaron Boone. They gave him a middle name, didn't they? Just an addition. <laughs> Three balls and two strikes with two out. Isn't it almost like the Carlton Fisk home run where it had to stay fair? It was right on the left field line of our. No, it, it was fair by a lot. Yeah. It was one of those as soon as he hit it. It's pitch of the 11th inning. Brady Little had simply run out of bullpen pieces. There was nobody left. And Wakefield came in and hung a knuckler. And the Yankees, what was so remarkable about that year and then 2004, the Yankees and Red Sox played each other 26 times. Wow. 19 regular seasons, 7 postseason. Nomar, of course, was there. Two out walk. Parker. And I was talking to Nomar about it over the course of the season, how intense that rivalry was. Not unlike, of course, the Dodgers and Giants, but in a different way. That in 2003, they played 26 times. And those games last four, four and a half, five hours. They were battles upon battle. And one pitch separated those two teams after 26 games. Boone would have the last swing and the last laugh. 
And then the Yankees would face the Marlins and get their heads in. Mac Williamson has struck out twice tonight. And there's no balls and two strikes. Since returning from AAA, Carlos Frias has thrown the ball a lot better. Six innings coming into this game, only given up one run. And here is thrown the ball well. 96 on that one. I'm sure he'll be in the equation as far as the postseason bullpen. Especially with Mike Bolsinger struggling in his last four or five outings. Another right hander that can go long. Sometimes in a five game series, you might have a few more guys that are shorter pieces, but you get to a seven game series in the next few rounds, you're going to need long men, fourth, fifth starter type guys. Frias wouldn't have to worry about going around a lineup. Two or three times. I definitely think he's in the equation for a seven game series, and he could continue to pitch like this here and throughout the last few games. He could put himself into the equation and already is for the first series. Well, Bolsinger struggled again tonight, so his last four outings, he has struggled mightily. One ball, two strikes, and two out. We're in the bottom of the sixth. Lined on one hop to Rollins. Wow. He made that look easy, and it was not. No runs, one hit, one walk, one left. Jimmy Rollins will go to the seventh. Giants, 3-0. Seventy six will finish up here in San Francisco tomorrow on the air at twelve thirty first pitch at twelve forty five Brett Anderson and Tim Hudson and then the Dodgers final regular season homestand this weekend Friday night at seven Saturday night at six high noon on Sunday Joel Peralta going to work in the Dodger bullpen as we go to the seventh inning and Andre Ethier will be leading it off. Dodgers have been held to one hit by Mike Leak with his best start since coming to the Giants. Nothing in two to Ethier, who has flied out and he has walked. 
As Oro was saying, he's in that rarefied neighborhood at 298. A couple of more points. Can finish the year at 300. Very close play. This would be the third time in Andre's career that he hits 300. That'd be a nice personal mark, especially highlighting everything that he has done for this club this year. Left field, right field, platoon, trade rumors, pinch hit. Yeah, he'll probably be in the middle of trade rumors again next year. He's handled it in a very classy way, and he's been a true professional. It's nice to see him get completely healthy this year and have a big year. Chase Utley swings and misses, and it's nothing in one. And again, in point of service. He's been with the Dodgers longer than any other player. And second longest, Clayton Kershaw. Utley fouls it off, and it's nothing in two. It's a solid season turned in by Ethier. Utley. Thrown out by Tomlinson. There's two gone. When the Cardinals clinched the National League Central Division tonight, they did so with their 100th win of the year. Boy, that's been a team that's been decimated by injuries. They have persevered. There's something about the culture in St. Louis. The culture here in San Francisco, they do a great job. Los Angeles, they just continue, no matter what happens, to uh, produce people that know how to win. And it's not just their first 25. You know, the great teams, it's not the 25-man roster that wins. It's generally the 32 to 35-man roster. Of course, 40 the, the maximum. There's going to be business back and forth due to injury for whatever reason. I remember years ago, Terry Francona when he was managing in Philadelphia. So that's probably 20 years or so ago. They got off to a great start. And then they just fell out of bed in, in August. I asked him. Randall takes inside. Two and two. And he said, you don't win with a 25-man roster. If you don't have the kids to replenish those who become injured or struggling for whatever it is, go in the distance. And you know that whole cliche about baseball being the marathon. Dodgers have 37 men in uniform here. With the season coming to an end. Grandall bounces to second. That's going to do it. Mike Lee has held the Dodgers to one hit. He has struck out two, walked three, and he's got a shutout at the seventh inning stretch.
relief for the Dodgers. And while this is not a save situation, I would not be surprised to see Kenley Jansen in this ball game. And happy 28th birthday to the Dodgers closer. Kenley Jansen turning 28 today. And Don Mattingly almost having to take Clayton Kershaw out of the ball game yesterday. He would have had he reached 110 pitches basically to just get Kenley Jansen some work, guys. He hasn't pitched since Thursday at Dodger Stadium against the Arizona Diamondbacks. And moving forward, even if it is not a save situation, Kenley Jansen figures to be scheduled to get some work in to get him ready for the postseason. And so that's one of the things we were talking about at the open, how Don Mattingly and the Dodgers approach these final now almost four games, four after tonight. Who works, how much, who sits, for how long to get ready for a week from tomorrow night. So Jansen, as Alana said, it's been six days since we last saw him. Trevor Brown leading off against Peralta, who misses outside one ball and no strikes. Of course, Kershaw and Granke are scheduled to pitch over the weekend. And the question is how far, how many innings? Off to the right. One ball, one strike to Trevor Brown, who's one for two tonight. Well, if 110 was Clayton's landmark last night, I would say his landmark's going to be closer to 100 or maybe 10 pitches below that. He's going to be on normal rest if he goes game one against the Mets. Jack Greinke will probably be able to go as far as he wants, and they haven't really taken him past about 110 all year. Kershaw with 104 pitches last night. In his one hitter, striking out 13, walking only one. Hmm. In the outing before that, when he faced the Giants and struck out 15, he went 132 pitches, and that was the season high for him pitch count. Historical footnote about Kershaw's performance last night as Brown is thrown out by Seeger for the first out of the seventh inning. Kershaw struck out 13 last night, tied for second most in a shutout by a Dodger against the Giants in team history. The most was 15 by Carl Spooner in 1954. That was in his major league debut. A year and 11 days later, Spooner lasted a third of an inning, losing to Whitey Ford in game six of the 55 series, and he would never throw another pitch in the major league. Spooner, again, they didn't have the sophisticated radar guns that they do today. He was said to throw about 100 miles an hour. And he simply blew out his shoulder. Nick Noonan is the batter. Fifty-five was the year that uh, Koufax came up as a bonus baby. And Nick Noonan has... Left the yard. That gives the Giants a four to nothing lead. Noonan began the year in the Yankee organization. Joel Peralta has an outstanding split finger when he keeps it down, but that one was up and just kind of lay there in the top half of the strike zone. Well, made it all the way oh, just to the walkway. Didn't make it into the water. Noonan's first career home run. No wonder he's fine. Mike Leake has been struck out twice tonight. 4 nothing San Francisco. One ball and one strike. Angel Pagan is on deck. Right and out of play. Another note about Kershaw and what he has done here at AT&T Park. 
career ERA of 116. Third best by any pitcher with at least 100 innings at any ballpark ever. So he enjoys his business trips to San Francisco. Last night when the Dodgers needed him most, he came up biggest. One and two. That's Austin Barnes. Giving A.J. Ellis the night off. And as Monty Grandal's playing over at first base. You know, with Clayton, the separation that the Dodgers kept and really expanded throughout the second half. He's 10 and 1 with a 1.36 in the second half. You go back a little further. His first nine starts, mm -hmm. two and three, and a four and a third ERA. And they were saying, oh, what's wrong with Kershaw? His last 23 starts, 14 and four and a 142 ERA. <laughs> Opponents. In those last 23 starts, hitting 174. Might be on a mission. He's at the top of his game. Two out, and here is Pagan. One for two, a walk, a run scored, and a stolen base tonight. Peralta, the fourth Dodger pitcher of the evening. Kershaw six strikeouts away from 300. He's competing against himself, and that's what the best do. Who does he look up to? He has to look up to himself. And you know what? He's got so much integrity and so much character that he still is on a quest to get better. You never think that he's going to get lazy. Into center field, drifting on back is Peterson. That'll do it. One run, one hit. Nick Noonan's first big league home run, and Peralta's not the least bit happy about it.
Mike Leak, who has never pitched a shutout, has shut out the Dodgers through seven tonight and just one base hit. Austin Barnes leading it off here in the eighth. And a comebacker. One gone. Well, for Mike Leak, this is almost like a free agent audition. That's what he'll be at the end of the year. The Giants have, the, I'm sure, a little interest in signing him back, but a lot of scouts watching him. Well, the Giants have a lot of questions about their rotation. Of course, there's Bumgarner. And a lot of questions as Kenley is warming up in the Dodgers. Set. Matt Kane, will he be able to come back to what Matt Kane once was? Mm -hmm. Saw a note today that the Giants are interested at least talking with Lincecum about returning and what will he be able to bring back? Vogel song appears to be near the end of the line. So they've got some questions in the rotation. Scott Shepard worked with in the on deck circle. As Peterson, two balls on the strike. Another note today about Marlon Bird, who's about 10 or 15 plate appearances away from a vesting option at about 8 million. And apparently they said to him, You may not see a whole lot of time between now and the end of the season, but we still would like to have you come back. <laughs> Mac Williamson makes the catch here, two out. At a somewhat discounted rate. See how that plays out. You know, the most popular way to follow the Dodgers through the postseason is with MLB.com at bat, the number one at bat for live baseball. Enjoy live look ins, highlights, replay reviews, scores, stat cast, live radio broadcasts, and more. Get MLB.com at bat now. And Scott Shebler is going to pinch hit for Joel Peralta. Leak missing high and inside. One ball and no strikes. Giants have double barrel action in the bullpen. Sergio Romo and Josh Osich. Two out in the eighth. The Astros have tied the Mariners at six. Playing in the top half of the sixth inning in Seattle. Chevler with a shallow fly to left. And Williamson's there to track it down. Nothing across for the Dodgers. Ten straight have been returned.
Bottom half of the eighth, time for a look at the DraftKings game summary. Matt Duffy, a two-run home run in the first. That coming off Mike Bolsinger. Nick Noonan hit his first career home run in the seventh. And Mike Leake has a one-hit shutout through eight. And here is Kenley Jansen, whom we've not last have not seen since last Thursday, six days. His uh, 52nd appearance. Again, how much work will he get between now and Sunday? And then after Sunday, the Dodgers don't play another game until a week from Friday. How did the Dodgers like the Mets or anybody else for that matter? Playoffs and set the, the wild card play in games. How do you keep at your uh, at your level peak without work? Last game will be Sunday, and the next game will be a week from Friday. How do you do? It? You know, it's going to be hard for both teams. You know, to all of a sudden take that playoff energy and uh, put it into good mechanics and good mental focus and. To see who responds to having that time off. It's not like you're going to play somebody that has just played the one game playoff. And a lot of times we've seen those teams run the table, at least get to the World Series. One ball and two strikes to Kelby Tomlinson. Oh, I see Kenley out there reminds me of all the different hurdles that the Dodgers have come through this year. Him being on the DL at the beginning of the year and losing Ryu and McCarthy, 40% of your rotation. McCarthy, four starts, Ryu, none. And Kenley didn't show up till May 15th, having had foot surgery in February. And okay. it wasn't until a couple of weeks ago, in fact, Ryu is here giving love and affection from Alex Guerrero. But Ken was saying, didn't need to jump in. Ken was saying he had actually done any real running up until about a month ago. Mm -hmm. So one out here in the bottom of the eighth. Matt Duffy set the table and set the tone of this game in the first inning. This is the Argo top tier play. It's not a Dodger highlight, but. Well, the only thing we show that in baseball was exciting. Fastball by Mike Bolsinger that he planted over the left field wall, and that was the early difference in the game, and still is. 4 nothing Giants. And Nick Noonan would hit a home run off Joel Peralta in the seventh. Inning. Duffy two for three, fouls it back. There's 0 and 2. The Dodgers really have fought through a lot of injuries. I mean, you think about Carl Crawford, the two catchers have been on the DL with Ellis and Grandal. And Puig has essentially been a non factor all year. Puig, Howie Kendrick, uh, Kike Hernandez, when he became an integral part, all of a sudden went down. Hernandez missed 26 games. Justin Turner was down. Puig has missed 69 games this year. One and two. Oof. That'll get your attention. And that was not on purpose at all. That's just lack of work trying to throw a high fast ball is right a high cutter really had cutter spin but just ended up coming out of his hand too early the gentle giant on the mound doesn't have a mean bone in his body he puts on a game face and is tough out there in safe situations but that was definitely not on purpose all right so Duffy said all right you want to play that way do you he's three for four tonight
Now Brandon Crawford coming up. Crawford has lined into a double play, bounced into a double play, and has walked. Going to the seventh in Seattle, the Astros and the Mariners remain tied at six. Angels will lose to Oakland. And Duffy steals second base. That's his 12th stolen base this year. He's 12 for 12. A good jump and off he goes. And you say, well, what are they doing? They've clinched the West the Dodgers have and why are they still running? What are they? The Giants just play the game right. They're playing it hard. And I don't think they're going to lay down. They never have under Bruce Bochy in his ninth season in San Francisco. Beginning his managerial career in San Diego. That has been the hallmark of all of the all of his teams. That foul tip got a piece of Mike Estabrook. Brandon Crawford has stolen base tonight. Angel Pagan has stolen base. Now Duffy. Oh. No protection there. Giant trainer making sure he's going to get one piece. That's a good sign. Esther Brook in his second big league season. He's from Daytona Beach. Laughing it off now. Remember uh, last night, Justin Turner got hit on the forearm? That thing swelled up real good last night. I'm sure he's got a compression wrap on it underneath that jacket. That forearm after the game was about as red as his hair. 0 oh and 2 to Crawford outside. One ball, two strikes. I'm sure he didn't have to ice it though with all the ice cold champagne and beer being poured around the locker room. It stayed nice and cold for probably a good half hour. It smelled a little funky. On one and two. There's an unmistakable aroma about a winning clubhouse after winning a championship. Yeast. <laughs> And you can smell it for hundreds of yards. And there's a reason they wear the, the goggles because it burns. Yep. Those tears of joy, no. Tears because they burn. Small price to pay. Adam Libertor is warming in the Dodger pen. One out, one on in the eighth. The Giants with a four-nothing lead. Jansen delivers outside. Two and two. Alana was such a trooper last night. Watching the footage of her down there interviewing the guys. I mean, so much getting poured on her too. The mic at times would short out. She, by the end of it, she was shivering, but she hung in there and. I don't know if she enjoyed every moment of it, but I know it was an honor for her. She was fantastic. Two balls and two strikes. Looped into short center. Out goes Rollins. Two gone. Jared Parker coming up. Struck out twice and has walked.
Parker's had a couple of breakout weeks. Last Saturday came the first giant rookie in the history of the franchise to hit three home runs in a game. And when you think of some of the great power hitters in the history of the franchise dating back to New York. Mel Ott. Willie Mays. Willie McCovey. Orlando Cepeda, the baby bull. Bobby Bonds. Jared Parker, the first. Hard, hard to believe Barry Bonds didn't do it, but he probably didn't get pitched to. Right, he was a rookie in Pittsburgh. Mac Williamson is on deck. We've got two out in the bottom of the eighth. Line drive base hit off the bat of Jared Parker, who is uh, making his presence felt as the Giants look ahead to 2016. The RBI single plates Duffy, and it is 5 0 San Francisco. I like the pitch selection from Kenley Jansen, the way he's bringing the slider along. He hadn't been out there in a while, so maybe a little rusty. Young man makes a nice swing on a low breaking ball. And Jansen, night is done. 19 pitches, and he certainly uh, showed some rust. Adam Libertor is coming in. He'll be facing Mac Williamson with San Francisco comfortably in front of the bottom of the eighth, five to nothing. Dodger baseball on Sportsnet LA is brought to you by Nissan. Choose Nissan today for great offers on our most exciting lineup ever. Shop at ChooseNissan.com. The statue of the Say Hey Kid, Willie Mays. Adam Libator making his 39th appearance out of Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania. What was good He's the second most famous athlete out of Beaver Falls. By a wide margin. So name it. Out of Beaver Falls. Williamson. It's a strike and it's nothing in one. Trevor Brown is on deck. Two out in the bottom of the eighth.
No balls and a strike. Williamson takes outside. One ball, one strike. Talking about the, the great power hitting rookies of the Giants who go back to 59 and 60. Orlando Cepeda and Willie McCubbin. The town wasn't big enough for both. That's what watch out. Ow. Everybody's okay there as the bat goes flying. Two great Hall of Fame power hitters who could only play first base. And so Cepeda would eventually be traded to the Cardinals for Ray Sadecki. Cardinals like the way that deal turned out. <laughs> and for a stretch of his magnificent career at Candlestick. Inside and low, two balls and two strikes to Mac Williamson. His number retired. On one hop to Utley, that's going to do it. One run, two hits, one left. Ninth inning we go. Giants, 5-0. That catch made 61 years ago on Monday. Vic Wirtz robbed by Willie Mays in center field about 460 feet from home plate. Many things notable about the catch. Happened in the 1954 World Series. Of course, big deal made last night as the Dodgers went to the postseason three years in a row. They almost went to the postseason Five years in a row, 52, 53, 55, and 56. In 1954, the Giants would go to the World Series. And the Dodgers would have gone five years straight had it not been for the 54 Giants. Crawford leading off in the ninth. And a tapper to third. It's going to be a tough play. Duffy picks it up, not going to be in time. Crawford too fast. So an infield hit for Carl Crawford. That is just a second hit of the night for the Dodgers. Nine. 
And the 54 Indians were considered to be one of the great teams of all time. And there was Willie to track it down about 460 feet from home plate. Willie has often said that was not his best catch. He had one, in fact, at Candlestick Park where he and Bonds, Bobby, crashed into one another in right center field. And Willie was not cold. Ball never left his glove. And you were mentioning the other night, with his 660 home runs, how difficult it was to hit at Candlestick. It was easy to hit home runs at the polo ground down the line. But then it shot out. As Rollins pops to short center. And Pagan takes charge. Remember ta talking to Willie, and he said maybe he lost 100 home runs at Kelston. He lost a bunch. There's no question about that with the wind constantly blowing in and how cold and miserable it was there. Candlestick Point is where Candlestick Park resided. And now it's nothing but flat ground. Corey Seeger takes a strike. Nothing in one. Seeger is 0 for 3. And so that streak of his 21 straight with a hit or a walk on the line in this at bat. One ball and one strike to Corey Seager, who's bounced into a double play. Bounced out twice beyond that. And the 1 1. This looks like a game ending double play. And Mike Leak with his first career shutout. The Giants whitewashed the Dodgers tonight, 5 to nothing. So the 27-year-old left-hander from San Diego with his first big league shutout. And he couldn't have been a whole lot better than he was tonight. Leak struck out one, walked three, and kept the Dodgers off balance all night. And that is why he is the Lexus player of the game. Improving his season record to 11 and 10. Dodgers and Giants will wrap it up tomorrow. The Giants shut out the Dodgers tonight. So that's a wrap for us from AT&T Park. For Alana Rizzo, Omar Garcia.